Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna, I got a few special guests coming over. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna basically stand around the shop and shoot the breeze. Uh, the topic is hopefully, if we can stay on topic, which I can't guarantee, but the topic should be um, youth garden tractor pulling. Uh, something that I'm kind of passionate about. If you've been thinking about this as a, as a thing that your family could do, I encourage it and I'll do anything I can do to, to help you, you know, get learn what you need to learn, get comfortable with this, whatever. Um, so, so just, you know, watch the video. It's, it's probably gonna be a little on the long side, so you're gonna wanna do it when you have plenty of spare time. But uh, if it's something you've been thinking about, watch the video when it's over. You can contact me through, just through the comments below, or, or uh, you know, I have a YouTube and a Instagram. So you can, you can go there, you can message me, whatever you wanna do. I'll, I'll do anything to help somebody that's thinking about getting their, their young kids into garden tractor pulling because I, I just support it. I think it's a great sport, a great family thing. Um, so I guess, you know, without further ado, as we'll, we'll soon as they get here, we'll roll into it. And hopefully, hopefully you find it helpful. What I wanted to do was just to have a conversation about, I, I got thinking there's probably people who are just getting into tractor pulling with their kids specifically. So that's what I want to talk about is is kind of do's and don'ts maybe or things like that. I'd no. say if you definitely have a kid on a couch, this will get them off their ass. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But I mean, for me, my kid, well, one of them's here. We enjoyed and still enjoy garden tractor pulling, but when they were little, it was it was a lot of fun for them. So, well, I guess we'll start with introductions. This is my friend Steve Moffat, Dan and Mike Baker, and it's my daughter Cheyenne. Um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna kind of kick around do's and don'ts and things we've learned from garden tractor pulling specifically. If we can, we're gonna be specific to uh, to how it pertains to kids. You know, getting kids involved with it and and trying to you know if you're just getting started or you're just thinking about getting started, we can save you some some headache. Stevie is one of my best friends, and I probably wouldn't even know him. I definitely wouldn't even know Not him even if it weren't for garden check to pull it. So, yeah. um, and really the bakers too. I, I'm sure I would. I'm sure I would have crossed paths with uh, with Dan probably at some point. But uh, really, I met I met all these guys. Not her. I knew her before. I met all these guys through garden check to pull it, and that's one of the coolest things about it is you're going to meet. Uh, let me just say that if you're the kind of person that's interested in garden tractor pulling, you're going to meet more people that you're going to like for sure. And you, you know, with anything, you're going to meet people you don't like. But uh, that goes without saying. You could be in the baking club, and that would still happen. So, um, Stevie, what uh, you started doing it before your kids were old enough? Yeah, I started was, doing it in 2007. It was you that did it, and, yeah, then, and then when your kids got old enough, they started. Because doing it. I wanted to. Uh, compete against a good friend of mine. He always said he wanted somebody to beat up on. So I built a tractor and then the first time I pulled 76 tractors in my class and I ended up third. And where did he end up? 44. Nice. So I whipped him in good shape and he was more excited than I was. Yeah. And uh, then two years later, I was with you the whole time. You were so little that you had to remember when you, you pulled pants to pull on the lever to push the clutch in? She was just tiny. And then our friendship just grew from there and now we yeah. camp together and we do everything together yeah. but definitely get your kids into it stay in the stock class as long as you can because when you <laughs> jump off a class you go from a $500 tractor to a $5,000 tractor and if you want to compete you just keep spending more money <laughs> right Dan? I think, I think that's pretty good advice though the, the, the idea of staying first of all if you if you have a club join the club that's in your area um, and then if you're involved in the club or you have any influence in the club try to keep at all costs keep a stock class and keep it as stock as you can because you got to have an entry point for people especially the youth um, stock clash i think should be you know the rules should be such that it's pretty close to stock uh it just makes things easier and and you know you don't want a kid that's got potential to, to really love the sport to to get beat down because somebody else spent more money on their tractor. You know, it kind of levels the playing field. So I think that's sound advice. There's gonna come a point where you're gonna go, all right, we, we're a little bored with this. We're gonna have to move up. And that's that's cool, um, but you got a lot to learn 
and the stock class is the place to do it because the mistakes are a lot less expensive and uh, it's just a great class because it's very competitive typically you'll get you'll have 12 tractors probably that all could win at any given time so it, it keeps it interesting you don't usually get a kid that is dominates too bad that's that's good it's good for the sport it's good for the kids you don't want them to win all the time they need to lose a little bit right shack no, no, she didn't lose China one. never agreed with that one. <laughs> What's nice about it and also might not nice about it is you'll you'll develop all these friendships very quickly, but some of it is based on them taking pleasure in your misfortune. Now, <laughs> I use that word misfortune only in the funny way, but it's actually kind of true. But uh, two things were cool about starting out with you guys. The first thing was what you said, like the stock class, you could pretty much get into it with anything. Like we didn't have any idea what we were doing. Yeah. We had you know, whatever budget a normal person has, which wasn't a lot that we felt like they wanted at it. Yeah. And so, and, and we were in, right? Like all we had to do was pass tech and we were in and that was cool. But the other part that was really nice about it was that everybody we met was really nice. And I think sometimes people are reluctant to try new things or to join a club because they're worried about how they're going to be, you know, what people are going to think of them. And from day one, yeah, everybody was cool. And that pretty much, I mean, unless you're really into the politics of the club, which we generally aren't, right? You generally don't know if something's going on that's not cool. Everybody's nice, you know? And it's always been our experience that if something breaks, you forgot something, something doesn't go right in the poll, everybody's there to help you and no one really asks too many questions and then you do the same for them. And we've always really liked that that part of it. But um, turns out if you start off with a stock, bone stock tractor that you buy off the internet, the stock clutch that comes in a company that does not cut. When the tractor stops and the engine's still wide open and the clutch is out and smoke is pouring out from it, and your son says, "What do I do?" That's it's time to quit. <laughs> that was our first. Uh, that was our first experience. That was oh, almost ten years ago now, right? Yep. And now we've progressed from that one stock tractor to now where we have two stock tractors and a sports stock. And Mr. Lufkin talked me into building another one for my five-year-old daughter. She has three more years before she's ready. I didn't have to talk very much. Yeah, it could be way. about enough. Three years is about enough time for, of all the people that are standing here right now, I have no technical expertise <laughs> or ability. That's I not have, true. I have. He has YouTube. I have YouTube. Um, <laughs> everyone else here has has training and expertise and knows how to turn wrenches except me. But but I'm living proof that you can. <laughs> have fun in this sport. You can do you it. Have yeah. zero background. So that's <laughs> now you started when you were eleven. Yep. You started when you were eight, right? Yep. She was a she, she was a She's terrible a sport. Terrible. She just wanted to win all the time. We had an awful time, but uh, <laughs> she she turned into a slightly better sport, I think. Slightly. She's okay. Everyone, everyone except Stevie. It's okay. I mean, no, she's I still, love to beat the kids. I don't care if you cry. I right. Don't care. No, no, it's good. <laughs> I'll it's whip good you for every children. chance I get. Yeah, it's good for the children to get the. It's fun when they when they moved into the sports stock class. Now all of a sudden they're competing against adults. And uh, my kids, I think in our club you have to be a certain age to go from the youth stock class to the sports stock class. And I think you made that jump as soon as you were old enough, right? I know your brother did. So that's probably kind of dumb, but I mean, not really because they pulled um, stock tractors for a long time before they were old enough to go to sports stock. So, you know, they knew what they were doing. They knew there's a, <laughs> there's a lot to learn about just pulling, not just the rules of how the sport works, but you know, the details, how you, how you drive the tractor is, there's more to it than you, you may think. So, you know, they were there when they were old enough and, and they went and then all of a sudden they can compete with adults or well, or grown ups, older people like Stevie's. I don't. He's not really an adult. He's just Thanks. he's older. It's but, the best uh, thing you've ever said to me. <laughs> so yeah, the adults that really love them, they they want to really destroy them and but this not is let the, them get a big head. So this is this this is where everybody wants to compete. Is the sports stock class in our club? There's a lot of tractors, and then the camaraderie goes right away. <laughs> For a little while. Gets a little competitive. It gets yeah. a little credit. Then everybody that's winning the top three, everybody's convinced they're cheating. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're beating them, you're cheating them. That's the, the best time I've had at a poll was like 10 of us in a foot. Yeah. You know darn well that nobody was cheating and that was fun. Yeah. The kids didn't care where they were. They were just happy to get it done. Everybody, that's when they brought back the camaraderie and everything that I fell in love with the sport for. 
that was a nice day. Well, the other thing, Steve, too, like Scott said, on any given day, like like a lot of times when the Baker team wins, it's luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. we try a lot of different ways. It's pretty yeah. much always luck. But it happens. And even the blind squirrel will some days get your nut. That's it. Yep. Yeah. I had a first and then a fifth. Same right. rack of people. Same day, right? Yep. But we yeah. have days where we know people have a lot nicer tractors than we have. Ours is pretty nice, but they don't, they know what they're doing. They spend a lot of money. But every once in a while, everything kind of comes together. And that's the part, too, that when I first started out with this, I didn't know too much about it. But the part that I find fascinating is all of those variables that are constantly changing and trying to figure that out. Some days you get it. Some days you don't. It's, it's always luck for us. Like we're, we, 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 bl we blunder into it every once in a while. But that's what makes it fun. When I went first into sport, remember, I had a bone stock engine. Yeah, that's right. And I was always in the top 10. I just yeah, yeah. Especially at the end of the track. You get a track that you can overpower, and a yeah. tractor with less power will do better. Everybody was spinning Almost out always. like 85 feet, and I hit that, and I was just kept going. I was this like, this is too easy. I couldn't believe that I was 30 foot in front of everybody, but it just got through there, and I wasn't blowing the tires off. It was yeah. dogging by then. I you know, won I think a that's lot. the other thing that keeps people interested because, like Scott said, it's not just about the money. You know, and especially oh, yeah. when you see kids come into the to, to this youth stock class. It, it's okay not to have the fanciest tractor there because you still could win, right. right? And that's what keeps people interested. Right. And I think that's the beauty of it is you don't have to have deep pockets right. to start in this. Form. You you literally need. A, I mean, I recommend a Cub Cadet because they're they're just a well built tractor. But mm -hmm. you literally just need a garden tractor that can't be a piece of junk. It's got to run good. It doesn't need to have a lot of stuff done to it. Uh, just needs to run decent, and you need a decent set of tires. And you've got to get yourself set up where you you can hang some weights on it, um, but you don't need to spend a ton of money. I mean, I'm sure there's 20 of them on Facebook for sale right now if you just started looking, and and probably more reasonable than you think. When my kids were little, they never were stick and ball sport kind of kids, and we looked at a lot of different motorsports because I thought probably that was going to work best for them. Um, we looked at junior dragsters. My son had a dirt bike for a while. Um, we looked at uh, dirt track go-kart racing and I don't know, you just look around the pits and you talk to people and they're not, and this is only my experience, yours may be different where you are, but uh, they're not friendly, they're not getting along with each other. A lot of times, not always, but a lot of times. And then we went to a garden tractor pole and saw that that wasn't the case, people were for the most part, we're, we're getting along with each other and, and it was a really nice, uh, you know, environment. Did, uh, did you guys find that when your kids were younger, because I found this with Mike and also my stepdaughter Madigan, like when they're at that age where they're kind of awkward and not sure of themselves and they're going through all those growing pains where, you know, maybe they're not the most popular kid in school, Mike was, but whatever. You know, obviously. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Oh, I, I told you it was. Yeah. The thing I found about it, uh, for Mike, but especially for Madigan, was the amount of confidence that she's built over the last couple of years, yeah. especially with all the ups and downs with, with tractor pulling, getting out there in front of all those people, yeah. sometimes a little bit intimidating for yeah. the kids. And then when they do it, no matter how well they did, they're like on cloud nine because they managed to do it, you right. know? And and you say to your kid, well, you just you just handled yourself, all those people watching and everything, and it helps to build their confidence. And I saw that with Mike and definitely with Madigan. She's yeah. been growing up. It's been a it's been a tremendous thing for her. Same thing. She, you know, they, they didn't play, they played a few sports, but not, you know, that wasn't their thing. And this yeah. has been really helpful, I thought. Yeah. Did you guys find out with your kids? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. I think I think it is. Yeah, JoJo would be like so worked up in his stomach, and he's just not wanting to do it, period. And then he'd make his pass, be like, huh, oh, look at that. Yeah. I made it down there, and I took the drive it back to the car. That's key. Drive it back to the trailer. That's a good day. Yeah. But you know, picking this, over a drag racing, could you imagine that, Max? Oh in a drag racing situation, and be like, come out there after she whooped them, throw her helmet at him, said, Dad, guys, look at that, you just got whooped by a girl. Yeah. But you'd have been totally cool about it, right? You'd have been like, oh, hey, like, good job, good job, not like, hey, suck it, loser. <laughs> but that's a good point, too, Steve. Like, this is a, a garden tractor. I mean, I, I'm sure that Cheyenne found it, and Madigan does too. Boys, girls, whatever, they're all welcome, and everybody really, you know, there doesn't seem to be any kind of gender gap with regard no. to, nope. to that at all. It doesn't no. matter, and I find that pretty cool too. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. There isn't a lot of there isn't a lot of things that you can do as a family that uh, is that way. Really, usually it's 
you know, this morning we got to go do this thing for her, and then this afternoon we got to go do this thing for him. You know, a lot of families do that way. And that's fine if that's, you know, if that's your thing. I'm not, you know, talking down at that or at all. But uh, this is the garden tractor pulling is neat. It's a family event. You you go, you know, you plan it. Saturday we're going wherever to go pulling. The whole family goes. You you eat together. You hang out together when you're not pulling, and then you do your thing and you pull. Uh, usually you get two hooks at least at an event and uh, and it takes all day so you know if you're not ready for that and maybe it isn't your thing but uh, I would encourage you to, to check it out how it works where you are how the clubs work how, what you if they go to fairs how, what, whatever their shows are and just see you know how how that happens and if and if you can make that work for your lifestyle and and it's a great thing and the other thing is you know, we talk, I wanted to stay, try if we can, stay focused on kids, but I will mention that mom and dad can do it too. So, uh, yeah, you, don't you know, have they, have, watch. they have classes all the way up. If, if you, you, I would encourage you when you get started, don't do that. Get the kids going and, and you're going to learn a ton of stuff and they're going to learn a ton of stuff. And, but at a certain point, you might get comfortable enough to where you say, hey, we're, you know, we got this down. We got room on the trailer. We're going to. I'm going to build my own tractor and you can pull a stock tractor or you can pull something out, whatever. If you're, if you're not handy, you can just buy one from somebody and start pulling, um, tractors. So, and it doesn't really take anything away as long as you're at a point where the kids can kind of do their own thing. It really doesn't take away from the family part of it. You're, you're still operating as a family unit. I think it brings them closer together. Then you can make them throw your weights. Yeah, it's yeah. good to make the children yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, I always tell Brady, I said, why don't you throw an extra 100 pounds on mine and then we'll be good. Yeah. You know? Well, I always blame my back. I'd be like, I can't get down there to do them. So if you get yeah. down, but, you know, like for us at home, even off the track, like Bannigan is, uh, you know, she's a girly girl, right? But she <laughs> likes coming out in the shop and turn, like she's been interested in turning wrenches, trying to see what we're doing, and she's yeah. looking at it on YouTube, and it, it's not every weekend, but every once in a while she comes out, and she's like, okay, what are you doing? And so that's turned into her now going to pursue uh, an educate, a STEM education. She's going to a STEM school, and yeah. she wants to learn about engineering. So cool. I'm like, well, uh, you know, that helped. And, yeah. uh, Nuts and bolts is good for yeah, kids. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it ain't for all kids, but for, for the right kids, it's important. I, I've said to him a thousand times, when you're growing up, you got to learn to be handy and smart. Right. Because you can't really, I mean, you can get by with one or the other, but it's better to have both. Right. You know? Red Green says, if the women don't find you handsome, they better find you handy. <laughs> <laughs> what about you two? What do you, what, you grew up doing it, right? Since you were little, what, uh, what, what, did, what did your dad do wrong? What did your dad do right? What did Whatever, whatever you want to say about it. Anything? I think my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. He did, I think everything right. <laughs> um, he always supported me. He always, um, before I could push in the clutch by myself, he would push me back to the sled. <laughs> Actually, he still does that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hooks it up. Just spoil him a bit. Tells me what I'm doing wrong. Um, <laughs> but nicely. <laughs> nice. Um, in the sport, I think uh, has taught me how to be a good sportsman. <laughs> Compared a, to a better, a better <laughs> sports yeah. <laughs> No, she's, she's she's so much better than when she was little that it's ridiculous. Yeah, it was awful. Wasn't it awful? It was, she was awful. Little, it was awful. <laughs> She'd be so mad. Not anymore, though. No, not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> no. It was my favorite to watch her do it. I didn't care. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny thing was she still was kind of cute. You know. Oh my God! Oh, we play it. We just does a little thing too. Yeah. He gets so excited, even if he was fifth. She didn't see me. Yep. You see how far I went? Yeah. I kept it in bounds too. Yeah. Yeah. Driving yeah. out of bounds, that's a given. They're just going to keep doing it. They're going to look at you while they're doing it. So what about like uh, what specifically? You? What, about you? Yeah, what about you, Mike? You got anything you want to? Um, this is your chance. You can say anything mm. about anything you want to. I don't know. Uh, we've had a lot of fun over the years. I mean, me and Dad kind of were figuring it out together. You know, we didn't really know a whole lot about it, but. A lot of trial and error, and you know, even a bad day of tractor pulling is better than a good day of work. So That's it's true. never a bad day to be out outside, see some different places that you might not necessarily go. There's I mean, usually fried dough involved. You know, yeah. Always yeah. food. There's so, always yeah. food, which is a plus. And yeah. you know, especially if Amy goes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're always going places that you might not necessarily go on a yeah. daily basis. You yeah. get out and see some different things, and there's always a good crowd. 
Um, and when you do win, it's even better. So yeah, it's definitely yeah. something to go check out. What about yeah. holding the flashlight in the shop? How's that? Well, the shop's a whole different story. <laughs> We're not getting into that. There's some mental. We should put definitely, it definitely, the definitely times I'd rather be at work than in the shop. <laughs> you know, but um, he's he's pulling it back up on YouTube. Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, the shop was definitely the struggle. Yeah, part, but uh, well, but that's also part of why I pursued agricultural engineering as yeah. a degree. It's a lot of fun and gets your get your hands on some stuff and yeah it's, it's good i think what my dad did right is that he never ever yelled at us about tractor pulling <laughs> because it's never an occasion to yell at your kids yeah. even if they look you in the eyes while driving out of yeah right <laughs> and, and i'll tell you you're gonna you're gonna see my experience anyways is you're going to see some horrible parenting happening out there you know what it's Whatever. I'm not saying that they're bad people. I'm just saying that they're making mistakes. And, and but if uh, somebody yells at their kid for holding a flashlight around, like, don't you think that comes from a place of love? I think it it's does. Passion. Yeah. Right. In right. the right. shop, it's a whole different set of rules. Yeah, I'm just saying, not that, not that I would ever. No, that no, would be wrong. No, right. Do that. Right. Like that would be an example. But for parenting, but I mean, if, if he's pointing the light where he's looking, not where you're wanting to look, yeah. right? That's a problem. We're, we're not again. We're not talking about. But how do I know where he's looking? Oh, did I say he? I didn't mean that. Yeah. No, I didn't mean so. Oh. This other guy. So. like you're pouring fuel in it, and they shine it out the you know the, the fire. Like they think they saw a Yeah, I need to see the fuel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we got to take the whole flashlight just right out of the right. conversation. Yeah. I yeah. know for a fact I can't put a YouTube camera in my shed. <laughs> No. No, there'd be a lot of editing. Where did I pull my 916? Whoa! <laughs> Brady, did you touch my tool? What about, like, specific to, I mean, that's a tractor that I have sitting here. I brought in just as an example. Now, of course, it's a sports stock tractor. It's different than what I, I would encourage you not to jump in at a higher level. I want you to jump in at the, at the stock level. I guess I'll start. When, when I built tractors, I talked to people some, but one of the, one of the mistakes we made, and, I, and I've seen other people make, uh, you have to plan on hanging weights on your tractor. Part of the thing of having a pulling tractor is, is weight bars and brackets. And I've seen a lot of people will build their tractor and they will have dumbbell weights that go on the front and they'll have a different kind of weight that goes on the middle and then something else that goes on the back, whatever. And then when you get ready to pull, what, what you want to do, if you're a smart tractor puller, you're out there watching other people pull beforehand and you're going to go, oh, we need we need more weight on the nose or whatever the case. So these these poor guys, and it was me when I first started too, was like, oh my God, I, I gotta move weights around, but I can't just move one. I gotta I gotta go back to the trailer and I gotta take these off and I gotta put these on. So it's, it's chaos and it makes your day longer and more stressful. So what I encourage you to do is, whether you buy weights, you, you can buy them, whether you buy them or you, you get somebody to make them for you or you make them yourself, make them all the same and come up with a way to hang the same weights all over the tractor, unless they're weights that you never take off. For example, this, I don't know if you can see them. This tractor has these great big weights in the back never come off. There's weights underneath the rear end of this tractor that only come out if I'm pulling it because I'm, I'm a little heavier than she is. So that's all to make up for the driver. But for the most part, um, the weights that move are the same, whether they go on the front the belly or the rear and uh i encourage you to do that because when you're when you're getting ready to pull you might be second in line before you make a decision on the weights that need to move and and you can easily you know pull 10 pounds from the front and put it in the middle as long as your weights are all the same um so i think that's i think that's a biggie we like to have a box on the front and that's only just so that people can't see how much weight we have on the front because we're jerks like that um, so when they're watching us pull, they really can't learn anything. Like I try to keep Baker from learning anything at all from me if I can. Successfully. I mean, <laughs> some people have yeah. fake weights, plastic or aluminum or whatever. Full people, rack, no matter what. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just ball part of the fun. Well, what did you guys like? Was there pitfalls? What did you do wrong or do right that you would not want somebody else to? I make built the same mistake. a stationary front rack. You want it telescopic. It's got a real important job. Yeah. <laughs> I made mine stationary, should have made it slide. You want it to slide out, get your club rules. If you can have that sucker hanging yeah. out 96 inches from your pin, your hitch, 
make it 96 because you can do more with 10 pounds than you can with 40 if it's closer to the train. Yeah. I'll tell you, there's a lot to be said for people who, and I never was good about it, but a lot of people will always put the weight boom all the way out, even if it has no weight in it, or even if it only has one weight in it or on it. Um, it's just a habit for them. The weight boom is always out all the way. It is, it is smart to get in a habit of always putting it out. It's one less variable when you're trying to remember how <laughs> how to track the pull. Because a lot of times you come back out and in the spring next year, you're gonna go, oh man, how much weight did we normally put on this thing? Or how did we normally put the box out or in? The less variables you can have, the better. Notebooks are nice. Notes are really, we're, we've never been good at it either. So do as I say, not as I do type of thing, but uh, notes can be so helpful. You, you write down in a notebook what the track was, if it was dry or, or wet. Um, you know, you can write down any kind of weather details you want to, but then most importantly, write down your tire pressure, how much weight you had you know, in the front, in the middle, on the back, and how you placed, really. Because it really doesn't matter how far you pulled, like the, the distance doesn't, doesn't matter. What matters is where you ended up in the field of other tractors. So write down how you placed. You'll go back to that. People that are good about that have a pretty valuable resource right in the trailer. You break that stuff out and you go, man, this track's a lot like the track at wherever. So you go there and you look through the notes and you find a day similar that you did well and you set the tractor up. And, or, or maybe all it teaches you is what won't work. You know, but, but either way, you, you're gonna do better for sure. How about you guys, any big mistakes you've seen us or other people make that you would warn them about? Specific to the hardware, so to speak? I mean, I know one thing that we struggled with initially was tires. You gotta experiment with different tires and yeah. that's a whole different ball game <coughs> in itself. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, the best, what I always thought were the best tires was the Carlisle Super Lugs, and they, I guess you can't buy them anymore, right? Yeah. No, yeah. And they they are. They, hands down, they really the best are tire. a great tire. Yeah. Um, Sidewalls work good, the trims yeah. last. They're just a good grip and tire. Yeah, but there are others, and, and, uh, and hopefully you find people, I'm hopeful that before you get into pulling, you can find people that are into pulling, and you can talk to them, and they'll be honest with you, you know, and they'll, they'll give you a good sound advice on what they've tried and what works. But. And, you know, find an event and go to it. Yeah, watch. And then talk to people. Yeah. Say you would like to be get interested. Find other families that have kids and said, you know, how'd you guys get into this? Right. How yeah. much money did you spend? I mean, Dorothy's tractor cost me $80. You can make them cheap and they'll, they'll pull, find somebody, ask them questions. So Dan's back. Uh, Sorry. Well, we're just talking about... Dan. Uh, <laughs> 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 we now have to change the subject. Uh, like specific to mechanics or, or hardware, things that you would suggest or or not suggest people yeah, do. So, I mean, when we bought the 1050, again, we didn't know anything about it. And to me, the three biggest things, don't worry about the engine. If the engine runs okay, don't, don't worry right, about it. it don't smoke matter. and don't skip, it's, it's probably matter. okay. Doesn't matter the horsepower, it doesn't matter, right? To me, one man's opinion. A gear drive, you know, like a like a, a standard transmission, not a hydro. Yeah. You need a decent clutch, which is typically going to be aftermarket because we are living proof that stock clutches will not take it for more than what we say about well, halfway down the track the first time. <laughs> give or take. Yeah. Come to that's are a super well engineered track. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah. But they're not engineered to have weight added to them and have you know twenty six inch tires on them at all. They they never came that way. Yeah. And and. A bar top, a 26 inch bar tire is a, a lot more bite than that tractor was ever designed for. So it might hold up the clutch, but our it experience has been that that's not the Yeah, case. it would be money well spent to do an update. If on you the were going to do three things progressively to a stock company car tractor, I would do the clutch first. I would say that weights are second. Weights and tires are like the two, and they're like neck and neck on how important they are. But those three things. They'll get you in the ballpark right away, no matter what you have yep. for a track. Yeah, one more. Yeah. Go ahead. Transmission lock. Oh, oh yeah, 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 good yeah. point. Lock yeah. it in gear. Yeah. Lock that's it important. in gear. Yeah, yeah, right. Even if it's a bungee cord, yeah. lock it in no, gear. No, that's a valid point. You're yeah. right. Yeah. 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 And, that goes, and that goes back to Dan. what Dan oh, yeah. said was to use a gear drive. Uh, I had mentioned that. I've seen 
Uh, we've been pulling, how, how long have we been pulling garden tractors? Why it was 16. nine. So yeah, 16 ish years. And uh, I've seen so many kids unbelievably frustrated because they had hydro. Just don't do it. <laughs> Just get a gear too, tractor. Too and, much for and it's, they, they can't process it. There's too much going on. And it really is, I, mean, I don't know if I could process it to be honest. It's, it, you're having to make constant adjustments while you're pulling and it's, they've already got enough that they need to think about. So get a gear tractor, lock it into gear, when their foot's off the clutch, they don't have to think about that anymore. They're going, you know. Um, all they gotta do is get the, get off the clutch and get the throttle open all the way, and that part of it is, is out of their mind because they're gonna have enough to think about trying to make the thing go straight. Yeah, and we found, like I said, once we had some decent tires, a good clutch, and that movable weight, that was key. The other thing that goofed uh, my stepdaughter up was some of, some of the garden tractors have the option for a gas pedal, and it looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, she couldn't do it. We had to switch back to a hand throttle that could be set, and yeah. then once it's set and her foot's off the clutch, then she just needed yep. to drive, and that worked out a lot better. Yeah. So when they're, especially if they're real low, and they're, you know, because what our club allows them to start like eight, right? Yes. Yeah. So at that age, they, the, the coordination between the throttle and the clutch is, they, they, some, some can do it, and some really yeah. can't, and, if they struggle with it, the hand throttle is the way to go. I think it's but, ask them a lot, though. Yeah, the kid. Yeah, yeah. For us, we don't even think about it, right? Because we can drive a standard. Well, I mean, damn, can. Yeah. But some yeah. of us can. Just for the record, <laughs> internet. I drove big trucks all over this country. That's the one thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I witnessed that. Yeah. Dan's my resident truck driver, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a lot for a kid. And some clubs let them start when they're five years old. So a hand throttle and a foot clutch is a lot for some of them yeah, to really to understand. So don't add, to, don't add to the confusion, right? Keep it simple. Keep it as simple as you can. The, a, a garden tractor was designed <laughs> by some smart engineers to be easy to operate. Just keep it that way, at least when you're starting out, you know? And, and we worried a lot, because I didn't know, we worried a lot about the displacement of the engine and all this other stuff. And then come to find out, it doesn't really matter as much as, you know, like I said, the tires and the weight, that was really where it was at, the displacement. Yeah, I mean, it helps, but yeah. it's awfully nuanced, especially when you're first starting out. If you have a 10 horse instead of a 12 horse or what, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And you're gonna be pulling against an art club, a whole, just a hodgepodge of different engines and you know setups, and it, it doesn't really matter that much, you know? Yeah, when we, when we started, Wyatt was nine years old. He had a 10 horse tractor with a bad rod knock and I mean, it ran okay, but it made horrible noises. I mowed my lawn with it, with the rod knocking for probably five, eight years, I don't know. Um, and he wanted to go tractor pulling. So it's like, yeah, okay, we'll <laughs> actually, uh, but when we first started to talk about interchangeable weights, when we went from the light class to the heavy class, we had a big, ugly bracket uh, across the center and you put, I put old sprockets from a bulldozer on. <sighs> one on each side to get from the light to the heavy. I'll try, if I find a picture, I'll put it That's on the video. Yeah. It was it was an atrocious setup, but my God, he was such a happy kid, he loved it. And and like you say, that was a 10 horse tractor. It wasn't even a very healthy one. We pulled it for years, it never died. It was enough of a tractor for him to realize he loved tractor pulling. And we definitely were gonna keep going with it. You know? You'll see a sick 10 horse beat guys that you know not only have a bigger engine but you know are cheating <laughs> and sometimes it just ain't horsepower that does it you know so don't sweat it that's i guess the point to take away from that is you find it you find a tractor you go ah it's only a 10 horse i'm not going to get it no maybe maybe just go ahead and get it for for one thing we we're saying it's not a huge difference but secondly it's a pretty easy swap later to put a bigger engine in it so yeah. uh don't be afraid to to just scoop up, you know, almost any old thing. The other thing that's cool about it too, like from a financial standpoint, right? Like all the stuff that you guys just talked about, it can be sequential too. Like you can start out with the setup that you have right. and then make sequential improvements year after year without having to spend all the money all at the same time. So to your point, if you decide you want a different motor, well, you don't have to do that the first year. Right. Because yeah. maybe you're buying some weights that year or you need a different tire setup or whatever. Yeah. You can do those things progressively. And that's what we've done. I mean, that, you know, we've made, incremental changes over the year. We started out with that one tractor and a little cruddy utility trailer, yeah. old utility trailer yeah. up to where we have a little bit nicer setup now, but that was over the 
course of a decade. Yeah. You know? So that, that's helpful too. Yeah. If you make more power, don't think you're going to get away without improving the transmission oh, or yeah. rear end some because it's going to come to get you. Yeah. But, but like Dan says, you don't have to do it right away. You can wait for it to break. It's not like you're, it ain't NASCAR. You know? It's just a fun thing. So get out there and do it. And put, tractor pulling is kind of like a pull it, break it, fix it, repeat. It just never stops, really. Yeah. Um, That's actually what brought us to Argyle today. Yeah, Dan came to pick up a motor, which he <laughs> broke <laughs> in a great, grand way. Oh my God, that was epic. Yeah. yeah. It's epic. Yes. Yeah. My stepdaughter's had a story to tell now for a couple of years. Yeah. That. yeah. Well, you can well, take, you the broken, the yeah. take the broken, take the broken block now. Maybe you make a lamp. Could it be oh, a great oh, Christmas oh, gift oh, idea? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, you make two. It's a good one for each side of her bed. Uh, the top yeah. half of the block is over here. The bottom half of the block is over here. Over the years, you know, we tried. We really tried not to spend too much on it. Really, right? We got busy lives. The family's growing up. Yeah, you got a house payment, whatever. The single biggest thing that we did, and it was a chunk of change that really improved things for us as a family, as a team, whatever, was that close trailer. Yeah. Because we went from struggling with bad weather and rain, and you start out in the morning and it's raining, and you get there and it's nice, it was just a nightmare. And yeah. a lot of people do it that way, and it's perfectly okay. But I have to say, if you do get to a point where you got a little extra and you want, you're thinking, geez, what would be the one thing I could do? What a difference. Yeah. yeah. Like, Plus like, you can storm in there for the winter. Well, yep. And when you get home at the end of the day, after a long oh, day, man. and it's hot, and, and you get home, you don't have to do anything nope. except walk in the house. Yep. Yep. I think that's my favorite part yep. of having yep. a close trip. No, yeah. Or if you get home on, on a, a Friday afternoon and your buddy calls you and says, hey, I'm going tractor pulling in like two hours. You in? I was like, yeah. You can just back up to that thing, whip the ball hitch on it, and then head for our gap. Yeah. Yeah. All the tarps and oh, yeah. oh, yeah. strands yeah. and tarps. We started with a 12 foot landscape and open trailer, and uh, yeah. yeah, it was a disaster. Plus, the, you're going down the road and things blow off, or the hood blows open, or you know, who knows? Is there anything can happen? All of us, I think, did it for years the other way. Right. And oh, there's yeah. still plenty of people that do it that way. Yeah, it's don't just, jump into it spending that money no, also. But it extends but your range. Yeah. And the other thing that I like about it is if you did decide to spend the night, we've done it a couple of times where yeah. you go someplace and you find a hotel, but now all your stuff is secure. Like, it's it's nice, but you don't have to do it that right. way. Or you can and sleep in it. I've done that too. For us, there's enough local poles where you have an open trailer or it's in the back of your pickup, it really doesn't matter, right? Like, it's close and you can still do it. Yeah. So, I, it's just... If, if somebody asked me, what's the one thing that you spent too much on that really was worth it? Man, that was yeah. hands down. Yeah, we bought our enclosed trailer used, fairly cheap, uh, and it had an on, a camper awning on it, which is it's it's awesome. amazing. Yeah, pretty nice, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you got, you got the trailer part of it, but you've also got shade, and you can put more chairs and more food. And, and here's something else. Like, when I first bought the trailer, let's just say that, like, stepmom, she wasn't all in. You know, you ever had that where, you know, where, where, where the family dynamic is that. I'm familiar with the Like, situation. there's a negotiation. Sometimes you don't reach a, you don't reach a conclusion. It's just like an uneasy truce. Is this going to turn into a marriage symposium? Well, no, I think, but, but here's where they're going. The very first time we used it, as is often the case, and you may recall, that Wyatt said, no, I, I don't think it's going to rain. Yeah. It rained a lot. Yeah. Like, it rained buckets. Yeah. And, <laughs> my stepmom then got into the enclosed trailer with her folding chair and her book and everything and it was pretty good and yes. on the way home she's like that was a pretty good idea yeah i mean the uneasy truth still existed but it was better right. than it was she really gets more excited when she knows that i'm going to be there you know? oh yeah oh definitely she's like oh, that, Steve, you gonna be there? And she saves me a parking spot yeah. so i don't know anybody got anything else do's don'ts things you love things you hate i mean you're always gonna there's always gonna be things you hate about it too i'm gonna warn you right now there's gonna be people Pitching. There's good. There's there's there are cheaters. Don't be one of them. There are people that are just not friendly. And I shouldn't say you're going to hate them, but there's going to be issues that are going to go. For very good piece of advice Dan mentioned earlier is don't get involved with club politics. Nope. Just have fun. There's yep. always have fun. fun. Yep. Um, the, the people that need to do that stuff, they can be over there somewhere, and you can ignore them. And that's what I encourage you to do is uh, <clears throat> just. Just stay out of it. Um, do what you want to do and, and have a good time. It's it's a great sport. It's been great for my family. And, you know, a lot of people look at it as a thing. Well, then we can, we'll do that. And then we can pull trucks or then we can pull a you know, farm tractor or whatever. And you really don't have to look at it that way. 
my son is 26 years old and and look look at stevie's my are adults we we still pull tractors dan we're yeah. gonna get to pull a tractor we'll maybe put him on my diesel i don't know just saying that's good fun. out there I'm not gonna lie um that's good fun but uh it it really is a you can you can move on to other things but there is nothing wrong with staying right here and doing this because i see a lot of people that move on to other things that well let's face it usually the problem with it is they can't afford it and that is a stress on your family that sometimes is fatal and you don't you don't want that you don't need it because you can keep doing this if you're having fun with it there's really no reason to to feel like you need to move up if you want to call it that or buy a 1066 and start pulling i mean there's nothing wrong with that it's great oh it's great but it ain't for everybody that let's put it that way anything else no i covered it pretty good all right got a lot of information there yeah do it if you're thinking about it go meet some people wherever you live if you live near me come and meet me that's fine um but i'm assuming there's probably people on YouTube, that guy right there, he's not from around here. You seen him before? No. Uh, I know him. I want to be your friend. That guy next to him, yep. he's not from around here. So you guys go wherever you are and go to the county fair or wherever. Or come you, to Argyle. Yeah, come yeah. travel to Argyle. We'd love to have you. Um, but uh, go meet some people. Go watch a poll. I know it's we're putting this out in the middle of winter, but the way the internet works, I guess this stays... I think so. Forever. So, I think so. You may not be seeing this until next spring. So in that case, get outside, go to a poll, meet somebody, talk to them, and uh, before you know it, you're gonna be you're gonna be doing it. If you have an interest in it, you're going to do it. So don't fight it. Just just get at it. I dug out some pictures here. Uh, these first few are my son's first tractor, his stock tractor. He only had one. Uh, we went right from that to sports stock. Uh, but that was his. It was a 108 Cub Cadet and really was quite stock. This was my daughter's uh, first stock tractor. She actually had a second one because she stayed in the stock class for quite a while. And really threw that first one together out of junk just to see if she even liked it or not. So then we went ahead and built this one, which we painted and stuff. And it was all girly, had a butterfly on the hood and all that stuff. She just loved it. Well, there, there you have it for what it's worth. Uh, <clears throat> I hope it's helpful. I hope you, you get something from it that you can use. Uh, and like I said, feel free to reach out to me uh, or before you even jump into it, go to a local event. You'll, you'll figure out where they are. The internet is, makes that easy. And just go around the pits and talk to people. You're going to find, you're going to find some of them very helpful and some of them less, but you should be able to get the answers to your questions. Uh, and and figure out if it works for you it's really a fun uh, sport the the venues usually pulls are at something that's already fun you know <laughs> sometimes it just to be a pull but uh there's usually a fair or a festival or a, a charity event or something and that's where they have these pulls so not only do you get to do it you get to you get to go to these things that you maybe you wouldn't have gone to otherwise and they're just they're just fun so um, you know, my family, we, we, uh, participate, you know, if it's at a fair, we, when my kids were little, at least we would go on rides or whatever they wanted to do. You know, the food at these, at those events sometimes is a little pricey. So we, we will take, we'll take uh, a little barbecue grill. Sometimes we bring a ton of food and feed all of our friends. So it's a, it's a great, it's a, just a fun thing. If you're not handy, um, I know we, we, we use the word build the tractor a lot of times, and I don't want that to scare you because what we mean by, when we're talking about a stock tractor, what we mean by building a tractor basically is, is putting bigger tires on the back, weight bars, weights, and a hitch uh, is, is what it comes down to. And a way to lock the shifter, which, like we said, really can be a bungee cord. Don't so, be afraid of of it because there's an aftermarket out there if, if you're not aware it's it's gonna it's probably gonna blow your mind um there are several companies who make parts it's almost bolt-on uh if you want to build a tractor uh so 
I'll, uh, you know what, I'll throw links in the description for this video for the ones that I'm aware of. If you're, a, if you're making parts and selling parts, um, just throw me a comment with a link to your website if I've never heard of you before. Um, I, I'll be happy to, to add your link to, to the description in this video because this video will live on the internet for a while, I suppose. So it might be, it might be for years to come. Uh, Folks going back and, and, you know, through a search and looking at this video and, and they'll find your link. So I'm happy to do that. Anybody, uh, just, just, I want you to know that the, I'm going to throw the links in there. I'm not, I'm not sponsored by any of them. I'm not telling you to go to any of them. Um, I'm just getting the information out there. You have to decide that for yourself, but, uh, it's there. Like I said, it's, it, it, it's gotten to the point where you really can just buy the stuff and bolt together a tractor. If you can, if you can run a spray paint can, you can do a de a really decent job at putting together a pulling tractor. Or if you're handy, uh, you know, go on those. I, I, they're not gonna like me saying this, but go on those websites and copy what they're doing. Pretty much, that's that's the proven stuff. So so you know, take what you want from this. Laugh at what you want from this. <laughs> what, yeah, whatever. Everybody, everybody thinks about things a little differently, and uh, and I get that. So, if I, I'm hope, I'm hoping that you'll find some of it helpful. If if you do, if if you like what you see, please click subscribe. Um, I'm gonna be. I've already got a couple videos, uh, tractor garden tractor pulling stuff on the channel, and there's gonna be more. You know, I'll keep I'll keep throwing stuff. My channel's just a hodgepodge of all the stuff that I do basically so you know there'll be all sorts of things on there maybe you're not interested in but if you like the garden tractor stuff click subscribe click the little ringy bell whatever it does it'll do and uh you can stay up to date on on when I come out with new stuff that's all all right thanks